Hello, we're from Zizana News. We're here with uh, um, Amina Abdat. With Amina Abdat. Uh, she's the producer of the film Zoo. And uh, we are going to have a conversation about the film. Okay, my first question is um, what was uh, the message that um, this uh, film wanted to um, uh, to get across? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so usually with films, especially animation films, it's ever it's up to everyone to decide. It's up to everyone to take away what they want from the film. Because it's art at the end of the day, everyone, everyone, uh, you know, interprets it as they wish. But um, for us, we were hoping to shed light on um, people who who are living um, under some form of occupation, whether it's literal or metaphorical. So in our mo- in our film, there's a clear wall that separates a city from the outside world. So some cities are literally enclosed by walls, which you know we've all seen, like in Palestine, uh, or like the Berlin Wall, or the wall that um, uh, Donald Trump said he wanted to build. You know, literal yeah. walls, and sometimes there are metaphorical walls, like walls that just uh, keep people from having their freedoms, like. Um, certain people are not allowed to talk about their history because their land has been taken or their culture has been taken or some people they're not allowed to um, you know um, have certain rights have the same wages any kind of just to shed light on any kind of discrimination or um, what do you call it Mm, like uh, closing in the box yeah, putting someone in a box. Yeah. Okay. So that was very beautiful, Miss Amina. Uh, could you please tell me what was the whole inspiration about the, for the film? Mm. What uh, uh, was the idea? Okay. So our writer and director Tariq Rimawi, uh, he was inspired by the film when he saw a story of a zoo that was described as the worst zoo in the world. That was in Gaza. Um, so back in 2014, uh, Israel was bombing Gaza and there was a zoo in there. And the owner of the zoo, because of the bombings, couldn't get to the zoo to feed the animals. The animals, by the way, were smuggled in through tunnels. They weren't even allowed legally in. They, were, they smuggled like lions and oh, all kinds of animals it in. It was an illegal zoo. Uh, yeah, kind, yeah, because they're not allowed to, ha- to bring in anything. So they smuggled in the animals. The owner couldn't bring in a food to feed them. So a lot of the animals ended up dying, sadly. And as a solution, once things opened up again, uh, he decided to mummify the, the dead animals that he, he had left. And he learned how to do it like on the internet. And, the animal, and he kept the animals in their cages. And they looked horrifying. And you can look up the pictures uh, online. Uh, So people stopped going to the zoo. So he decided that this isn't a good situation for the surviving animals. So he called for Paws Organization, which is an animal protective, uh, you know, organization, to come and save the animals that were left. They came in, rescued the animals, and left. When he saw the story, he was very touched because he felt like everyone in Gaza doesn't have food, water, freedom, safety, Why is it that some creatures are being rescued and the other creatures are just left to, you know, to stay in that situation? Uh, I believe that's why we saw the boy being locked in the city Mm -hmm. after giving away the tiger to the hospital. Yes. To the ambulance. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. What is it about animation films that um, interest you so much? Mm. Okay, so the beauty of animation is that you can be as fantastical as you want. With live action films, unless you have a, lot, a whole bunch of VFX, you know, you, you're very limited on what you can do. But there's no limit to the imagination when it comes to animation. Also, another very important thing, with, we, want, we want to tell a humanitarian story. A hum, like a hum, human story. Not 
a political story, not, you know, a, um, of, you know, it's, it's humanitarian. So always with actors, when you look at an actor, you, as, as long as you see a human in front of you, the minute you see him, you're going to judge that person based on the color of their skin, the way they talk, their facial features might remind you of someone, you know, it, so when it's animation, um, everyone looks at it uh, and they can um, put themselves in that character's shoes without having any kind of bias. Because at the end of the day, we, we're human. We have, we have biases and there's no way of, you know, pretending that they don't exist. So the best for us, we felt like the best way to tell our story, our human, our human story is through animation characters. Uh, another point is that it's usually we people use animation to tell fantasy surreal stories, and the story of Gaza is very surreal and fantastical that you almost feel like it's coming from the imagination, like it's suitable for an animation, not for real life. So it's sort of it's scary to think that something so surreal you would think only you'd only hear of in a story is you find out you discover later like oh it's it's, it's based on a real story all right uh, moving on let's go to the making of the movie how was the process of working with the the entire team okay this this is this is a really good question and it's always like for me it's the best question you can ask uh, like a filmmaker so It was a very small team, so everyone did everything. Everyone was a writer, an animator, an artist, a director, produce not a producer, but you know, everyone was everything. And we were a small team, so we kind of became family during, uh, during uh, you know, the production. And it was very interesting for all of us, the, and the artists especially. I mean, the writer and the director, he has experience, but for the artists, Uh, it was all our second film after our graduation project. So we were fresh out of college and we were just lost in the sauce, you know? Yes. And for me, I was a producer, an art director, an animator. I had to wear all the hats. And uh, it was... Um, and, oh, animating... Like, we were all just learning, learning as we go. Just learning as we go. So it was... It was very difficult. It was also difficult uh, seeing all the references for the film because all the environments that we see in the film are based on real images that we were seeing. So it was very like sad to you know be looking up our people's because we're all Palestinian also working on the set other than the yes. Germans that were working in Germany. Um, um, yeah, so it was also very difficult you know doing doing the research. And while we were working on the film. There was another bombing happening in Gaza, yeah, so it was like we're, we're you know we're we're drawing these backgrounds and making these animations while we're hearing the news of what's happening. So it was, it was pretty, it was difficult artistically and it was difficult emotionally, but it was also very fun because we all became family and we were all learning how to do this for the first time. It was a really good experience. Do you have any advice for upcoming animation filmmakers? Okay, so I think I have, I mean, there's, it, it depends on where the animator wants to go. You know, if, if they want, uh, it really depends because animation is so vast. You could have, it depends, so vast in what type of animation you want, what kind of, what industry do you want to get into. Um, it, for me, Uh, for me, I, pref I like animation because I like art. I like to be creative and I like to express myself through art. And I think that the scariest thing that can happen to an animator, which happens all the time and I get very sad when I see it, is that you lose yourself and you, you lose yourself as an artist working on the job, you know? So it becomes more of a job and it stops being a passion. And it's really sad to see because, you know, You go in thinking like, okay, this is what this is what lights my fire, and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, and I get paid to do it. And then, along the way, without noticing, you end up. Uh, it just becomes a job. It doesn't become a passion again. So it's very important to do whatever it takes, to keep that fire burning. And, for me, it meant leaving leaving the industry. 
and just keeping art as my thing and not for a job. So whatever, you know, whatever it is that keeps your, your passion alive, do that and don't lose yourself in a job. Okay. And uh, could, I, could I ask one more thing? Mm-hmm. Have you ever worked in other projects? Okay, so I worked for, I did my graduation project. I did the whole thing from A to Z, uh, which was a, a 2D animation frame by frame film as well. And also I worked for a Spanish production. Uh, I worked remotely for Barcelona in Barcelona for a company called Device Studios. Um, yeah, I worked for them as, uh, you know, working on a short film that they were creating as well. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. It was nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Yeah, of course.